Yo, what's good? It's Amari. Um, yeah, you're about to listen to the Alem Worldwide interview. We did this in like early October. I just pulled up to her crib and we talked for like an hour and a half about a whole lot of stuff for real. So y'all are in for a, a nice treat. Um, thanks again, Alem Worldwide, for doing this. It was a great, great experience. Um, so yeah enjoy and uh yeah one last thing around like 45 minutes in to the interview we're talking about anime and we're saying samurai shampoo but we actually mean cowboy bebop but yeah enjoy how's it going this is sleepwalker radio and uh we're here with the one and only alem worldwide um so yeah, how are you? How are you doing? Chilling. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Um, I just been burnt, really. <laughs> <laughs> ain't, ain't shit. You know what I'm saying? Uh, I'm good though. I'm good. I'm very happy to be on this podcast. It's my first podcast, so. Facts. This facts. is exciting. I'm very happy. Yeah, no, me, me too. We uh, met each other in January. Yes. Yeah, yeah, working at a songbird and stuff. So a little internship there, and you had been mm-hmm. working there and performing and all that good mm-hmm. stuff. Um, literally every job, but sound and management. <laughs> <laughs> Quite literally everything like else. Yeah. <laughs> um, well, I guess to start off, what uh, when did you start making music? Mm-hmm. Like first time I recorded, or first time I made like my own like body of work. I'd say first time like you recorded. Hmm. First time I recorded, I was, I'd say six or seven years old. It was sure. my homegirl, Naomi Sleepover. We were friends in Muslim school. Mm-hmm. And her mom, uh, Miss Namat, she actually owns a really well known um, hair lock in um, beauty salon. Uh, yeah, it's called Fabulox. Um, but yeah, back in the day, she was like a recording artist. I used to think she was, it was I was a weird kid. I always thought that she was. Um, Who's I am not my hair. I always thought she was India Ari. Oh sh- And they're like, oh, your mom's on TV again. I just thought, <laughs> she's like, no, she wasn't. I'm like, are you sure? I just saw because the scarf. And anyways, uh, it was her birthday. We went to like uh, her mom had like a basement studio or something, mm-hmm. and we were just recording random sounds. And the first thing I laid down was um, you know, a song my band by um, oh, what's that group that Eminem had? D12? D12. My band. The Me Sasa Mix Sound Pretty Good. I don't know oh. why I sang that. <laughs> I was so hyped to spit that. Yeah, that's Because <laughs> awesome I thought that was the flyest shit I've ever heard until I realized how offensive it was. And I was like, ooh, <laughs> you know? And I don't age like milk. Yeah. <laughs> it just got out. All the music, a lot of music from that era, for real. Just like listening to it now, it's like, oh my. Yeah. This is wild as hell. Yeah. The fact that we just let our Kelly exist as thing for like such a long time. Such a long time. Oh, and like. everyone knew what was going on. Yeah, we make jokes about it. It's like, bruh, I was a little <laughs> kid, but it's like, kind of goes like that rhetoric of like fast ass girls. And it's just like, nah, fuck ass adults. Like, <laughs> the amount of sexualization that little black girls gotta go through is kind of crazy. But as I digress, yeah. yes, D12 in my band. <laughs> I recorded the outro to that on this random beat. I don't know what type of beat it was. Mm-hmm. I think my dad still got the CD somewhere in the house. But uh, first time I recorded, like seriously, with the intent of making a song. Yeah. Um, I, have to, I think it was like probably like. <sighs> I've been writing like 14 and 15. 16, um, Mike from OSP. Um, he, we met at some party on my birthday. Mm-hmm. Maybe a week later, um, he invited me over his house to record some shit. Uh, well, first, I went to what's his name Dante. I think it goes like Dante Rainey. Uh, I went to his crib and I wrote this song, <gasps> Cherry Bomb. Whoa, I wrote Cherry Bomb. I'll come with me, I'll come with me, I'll take it to the place. That song, that was probably the first song I wrote, recorded. Uh, my, uh, my partner at the time, uh, James Artemis, thank you, he um, made the piano track. 
I just kind of riffed and sang on it, and I was losing my French at the time. I mean, I speak French and stuff because the people over there. Mm-hmm. I spit a poem on it, and I pronounce half the words wrong. <laughs> and <coughs> I was like, hey, mama, look, <coughs> I recorded a song. <laughs> and she was like, oh, that's nice, but like, <coughs> this poem is about fucking. It's not about <laughs> kissing, for one. And for two, you pronounce half the words wrong. And I was just like, oh my God. Okay. How great, you know? <laughs> um, and yeah, so I kind of, t- I try recording, recording, recording. And the scene back in the day, as you know, was a bit sexist. Definitely. Yeah, a bit colors. And it was a sexism that both the men, women, and the queers were all part of in general. I'm sure. And so there'd be cases where, like, um, I'd be recording what, like, that group or whatever and mm. somebody would just like lie and say the computer crashed and just delete all of my sessions so honestly between the ages of 16 to i'd say like 21 tw- yeah 21 i've had at least five whole albums delete on me what yes of music oh that God. i wrote stacked the harmonies did all this preparation and it would either be the sexism of where like a dude will try and come on to me, mm-hmm. have a free studio session, and then go, oh, girl, you're doing so good. And touch this one back, like, can I get some tops since it's free? It'd really what? be crazy shit like that. And I just hear, like, what? That's wild. It'd be, like, grown men. Grown men. And that's why, like, I learned how to produce the way I do. Mm-hmm. I learned how to track my own vocals. I learned how to mix. Learned how to, I'm yeah. learning mastering. And the dude comes like, motherfuckers kept playing with my material. And then telling me how I should sound, making beats for me and stuff. And it's just, like... I don't know. I hate a motherfucker that's real cocky. But like, moms used to be thinking that like femme presenting people or like women, like don't know what the fuck they doing in the studio, and so they like I don't know, use like big words or trying to overcharge singers yeah, and shit. Like, yeah. Yeah. So, the first like single was actually able to release that did fairly well was Blue Cherry Bomb, but I released like probably. I'd say two years after it was first recorded because I had to find the right beat and everything. Mm-hmm. I ended up recording it over uh, Joao Donato's I think it's pronounced Medeja but it's spelled like um, E D E I X A some shit like that. I always, I always called it Medixia back in the day. I was like oh this <laughs> sounds ghetto. Like, Medixia get your ass you know what I'm saying? Like, <laughs> what you doing Fast ass with Dixie, you know? <laughs> but uh, yeah, uh, I'd say maybe a year later, I recorded my project. Um, it was like my first thing I put together. What was it called? How did I forget Avatar? Yes, and that was an eight track. But I realized, as you know, working with men happens, the engineer had a crush on me, and it was just letting me do literally whatever I wanted with my studio time. Word. Versus constructively telling me, hey, yo, this is corny, yeah. this is cool. Because I be corny sometimes. I can't. Is. Yeah, you yeah. know, and like, it's hard to, you know, be able to discern what's good art and bad art. If you don't have motherfuckers, like, I think you should redo that. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Letting you just sing some foul harmonies. <laughs> or just like f- like cheesy words like mm-hmm. so i'm very ad- admittedly accidental hotep as you can see <laughs> umoja my brother um <laughs> but no <nah>, like <laughs> accidental to a point where it's just like i'm hyper positive and i start singing a lot about like uh let's save the world you guys the planet's dying Woo! and it's just like you gotta think of smart ways to say it the same way we oh, don't shit. like that style oh, of humor where it's like uh man over here if a you did this to a black person and, da, 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 and they say oh stop and if you did it to a white person oh, yeah, um well yeah, mister yeah. you know what i'm saying like yeah. that type shit like we be tired of that sort of shit and i feel like a lot of the messages that were put out in like the 60s or 70s as that style of comedy was mm-hmm. happening now we're just so used to it to where we're just like bro shut the fuck up like <laughs> you know like like there's so much more to talk about for real exactly or yeah. even talk about that on a more in-depth level mm-hmm. since we're already at that level of consciousness yeah exactly so because of that i scrapped like it was eight i narrowed down to two songs and one of the songs like avatar like the main song was a poem um and it sucks that's probably has, like my most listens on spotify mm-hmm. um I'll put it out for a second. Mm-hmm. 
probably has like my most listens and it's like a cheesy poem honestly like i had sitting back it was like beautiful sentiments mm -hmm. but not that deep and it wasn't that deep because i was what 18. you know what i'm saying it's and it's fair, just yeah. like i don't know um and then the other song bluetooth connect that don't still slaps i can't even lie i really i really fuck with that motherfucker. um Same. and yeah i moved to new york and took like hiatuses when did you, um, you move to New York? I'm, well, okay. actually, before we get to that, where are you from? I forgot to ask that. Oh, I'm from here. Um, yeah. I consider myself a Washington, D.C. person. Like, I was born in Virginia, like in Northern Virginia. Um, and I had lived my life between D.C., Virginia, Maryland, and France pretty much the whole oh, time. Word. Yeah, so I went to school, all the places, you know what I'm saying? Live all the places. But as far as, like, my internal growth, mm -hmm. I did a lot of that thinking, like, independently in D.C. Because, like, yeah. um, my mosque is here, you know what I'm saying? Like, uh, Master Muhammad. Um, and so our community is pretty, like, deeply, like, interwoven into, like, the, you know, old, 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 like... What's that movement called? I'm about to sound real dumb. Uh, like, kind of like 5% of Nation of Islam type shit. We kind of like broke away from um, the religion after a while and kind of started following more mainline Islam after okay. Elijah Muhammad kind of got exposed from yeah, it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, I don't want to get too into the details because I'm not trying to offend nobody within yeah, yeah. this because we all have our practices and that is needed in the black community in some spaces. Definitely. You know? So, Definitely. Um, you know, the methods, you know, we kind of stepped a little back from but a lot of the same culture and structure is in that and i was you know my grandmother taught at claire muhammad school and my grandfather he taught between claire muhammad and anacostia and howard teaching pre-med one of the first black muslim teachers at the school um Damn. yeah especially since like the you know civil rights era ended yeah. and everything a lot and of people kind of felt that yeah yeah and so um like at a very young age i was doing a lot of my like mental discernment you know understanding what god means to me mm -hmm. you know understanding what like where i fit into society because while i was at that school 9 11 happened and i feel oh, like that shit. was probably like my first like sentient moment of like people will perceive me as a bad guy in this lifetime Kill. for what i was born into you know and Damn, yeah. yeah like it was it was eye-opening and shit just like seeing firsthand like what that level of like xenophobia and racism looks like Hell like, yeah Knox <clears throat> I feel like 9-11 specifically everyone's immediate reaction was like crazy I don't really remember it mm -hmm. at all but just looking back at like the news that was coming out at the time and like the movies and the comedians and the jokes and shit yeah yeah and even like the music so I can even I can only imagine what it's like having to face that oh first of course hand and even from and like, so young too. from niggas too, and that'd be the problem, like, because this is supposed to be like safe space for us, that being within our communities, but mm -hmm. like, there was Actually. a lot of like weird jokes going around for one, and I still deal with that with my friends sometimes, I have to check them on Islamophobia, you know, it just happens, but like, yeah. it'd be that, or it'd be like motherfuckers assuming that we're gonna blow up something, a space mm -hmm. of any sort, like, it just, it kind of sucks coming from young people. And so that was, it was very difficult for me to maneuver like the normal world after I left my community. Mm. Um, because I don't know, like, especially going to like white schools after such like a pan-African pro-black situation, yeah. like it kind of made me feel like more reclusive and stuff and like to myself and like shy Naturally. and shit. Yeah. yeah, like, I don't know, I'm very grateful for, I guess being able to come back to DC as like, you know, a high school or a young adult mm -hmm. and kind of like um find my bearings again after being in so many like super 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 white spaces you know even in like maryland like maryland got its white pockets and definitely yeah love pg county well like you know like the rich black sometimes be like a little you know yeah. you know it, it really it's like rich and snobby yeah like. oh no it's interesting but yes, I am driving from this area and uh, saint genis de magloire in France. It's like a small um, village. It's like probably 30 minutes from Nîmes. Yeah. Mm -hmm. In the south. Um, what's like your connection to the to um, France? Or? My mother, she's French Ethiopian. So she grew up like in the earlier part of her life in um, Ethiopia mm -hmm. and then probably around like either seven or 12. She's very non-specific about the year. Um, 
she came to France, lived in Martinique, she lived in Tahiti, and yeah, Nîmes. Right. I'm pretty sure like one or two other cities, Marseille or something. And um, yeah, the famine in Ethiopia was really bad. And I guess he's like, I consider him my grandfather, but he's like a step-grandfather pretty much. He's, um, mm. his name is Patrick. He like came as a doctor without borders to um, Ethiopia and met my grandmother and kind of just like, kind of saved my whole family from like famine and shit. Cool. Yeah, it was kind of crazy. So now like they're in the South, you know, comfortably, you know mm-hmm. what I'm saying? I have a couple aunts and uncles, like Ethiopia ones that live in different like places in like Western Europe, but yeah, um, I don't know. It's a good safe space because it's so far removed from like, um, like a lot of technology. There's no like, um, skyscrapers or anything it's like literally like you know like that village from um beauty and the beast like in the beginning it's some shit like that i shit. don't but i feel like i know what you're talking like what yeah, you're saying like super like i don't know cobblestone and shit got you yeah so you've you've been there yeah i live half my life there oh shit mm-hmm. damn <clears throat> So you think that's had like an influence on just who you are as a person, you'd say? Yeah, um, honestly, because, um, I don't know, I always have this feeling of not feeling like I necessarily belong in any space, like kind of outsider or other, you know, like, feel that. and so like, I feel like I probably got it the most over there, like being like the only black family in an entire village type mm-hmm. shit, like. Especially in like the South South, like a redneck is a redneck anywhere to be honest. Like <laughs> any country you can think yeah. of. You go to the South, you're gonna hear a twingy accent <laughs> and some sort of sunburn. It could be like the South yeah. of the Himalayas, you'll figure out, you know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. Just white people be white people then. But um like shit. Yeah, um I don't know, it kinda drove me to go inward, you know, um in those times it's, it's interesting it's like a, also like a lot of nature too and i bring like a lot of nature into the things that i do and um every custom that, that i sense. have ethiopian like kind of came from there like i don't really have like um any close direct ethiopian family that like don't speak french or just speak english or whatever um so like it's kind of like a warped um uh, how can i describe it like a warped sense of like nationality because it's like still like a sub nationality. So I can like yeah, a, a quote I feel, I feel, of it. I know what you I feel, like. Mm-hmm. I see what you're saying. Mm-hmm. Word. Well, um, to bring it back to like more music stuff. Mm-hmm. Uh, when did you start producing? And did you start like singing first or like producing first? Mm-hmm. Or I guess you said that. Well, you can just answer. Yeah. Um, I say I was learning like some of the ropes of producing while I started off singing and Mm -hmm. I would always try and like practice doing my own like drums on a song like on a beat pad or I like specifically like adding lasers and synth sounds like I love a good laser. (laughs) These days I'd be turning bird whistles like um, I'd be getting like old like animal planet documentary type like birds and like kind of pitching it up and like fucking with the frequency and shit so it kind of sounds like a laser um i've been doing that specifically for like diff- certain like colored birds mm-hmm. like if i kind of want to like think about like my throat chakra or whatever i yeah. think like let me try and putting a blue bird on this song get like a blue jay or something and just try to like i don't know fuck with it so it's very color specific and chakra specific because i wanted to kind of have an effect on the listener um but yes Chill. to answer your question I started taking producing seriously in 2016, yeah, and so I'd say it's been like four years, four years of me seriously producing, and Fuck. I think I found my sound literally when like Corona started. <laughs> 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 like every moment before then, I was just like experimenting and stuff, and I knew that I had an R&B style voice, but mm-hmm. like I wasn't really focused on like. Um, belonging to a genre you know yeah. but i think low-key when it comes to black art sometimes having a genre and like a specific type of people you're speaking for or speaking to is good you know so i still consider myself mm-hmm. a soul singer but it's just not necessarily rhythm and blues you know yeah. um 
I'd say I've been sampling a lot of like uh, African music these days. Like I was telling you about the Moroccan, like um, Guano music. Yeah, I've been yeah. listening to Mali and drums. I love Yusu Ndor. He's mm-hmm. a Senegalese singer. His first album is like mind shattering. Like really? the type of like. Hold up, I'm gonna play some shit for you. All right. <laughs> his pockets go like insane. Um, like. This would be in African vibes. Mm. Yes, this one right here. It's freaking crazy. But, um, what are we talking about? Yes, I've been listening to a lot of African music. And I listen to like Ethiopian music as well. Um, specifically, like the prayer, like Orthodox gospel. Um, mm. It's just, it's speaking like an old language, kind of like a dead language. Like the mm-hmm. Latin of its time would be like it is. And okay. so they like it's kind of like how like Roman Catholics spread like Latin type shit. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. And the the runs go crazy. Really? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like the vocals really go down. Um, yeah, I feel like African, like specifically African prayer forms and just ways that they like communicated were so infused with like sound and music. Yeah. That like just a normal conversation could sound just fire. Yeah, I was actually watching a video about that recently. Really? Yeah, um, it was just like kind of how like every bit of what like you know, African or at least West African handwork is it goes to like some sort of rhythm and it's typically like that triple it sound, and um, I don't know like random syncopations, but like it'd be like a woman like um, grinding like yams or something like with a stick and everyone's hitting the stick at the same beat or whatever or yeah. like a motherfucker like, like weaving like a jacket or a hat or whatever it's interesting yeah, yeah. crazy mm-hmm. I feel like they just understood how um, or understand how everything's so interconnected and that's something yeah. that this like society we're in is Mm-hmm. moving away from type shit mm-hmm. um, but you when did you move to New York I moved to New York in 2016 like I'd say that winter uh, and so I was there for like four years Good. Like, yeah 20 end of 2019 or actually no beginning of 2019 um, I don't know what made you want to move there I wanted to be close to my sister, Dylan. Um, I really missed her and stuff. And so I figured I could do music stuff up there while she did like modeling or mm-hmm. acting or mm-hmm. DJing or whatever. We can kind of like work together on some stuff. And I also just needed like an escape from, you know, circumstance. And that's okay sometimes, like mm-hmm. needing a break. Like, I don't know. DC has been albeit a lovely city for me also a very triggering one with some of my past experiences cool. yeah and so yeah i just needed to not see the same faces yeah see small yeah. shit you see yeah, everyone all the you time. know yeah and also just like locations and stuff i don't yeah. know like it was it was a very dark period like before my moving mm. and it kind of gave me like a second chance at life low-key i really feel like the chance to really be the person that I wanted to be versus mm-hmm. like the person that was I was perceived of, you know, and acting as. Okay. If that makes sense, yeah. Do you feel like you started to like really pursue music when you moved to New York? Really take it more serious? Um, I think I was taking it seriously like um in high school and stuff. Right. Yeah. It was just more so like me being like super super young around super super old people like now my peer group is like all turning 30 you know what I'm saying? yeah like <laughs> i was like aup Word. you know mocha deck days you know um mm-hmm. but yeah i don't know uh i was pursuing it seriously back then it was just kind of hard to get a good grasp of i guess yeah because yeah. like finding yourself in high school is fucking difficult that on like top shit. of trying to portray a person that you're still finding, that mm-hmm. just means you're gonna have to put on a character. Yeah. And my character wasn't always necessarily a good guy, you know? So I wanted to shift. Like, I was mm-hmm. changed, I was evolving. And I was, you know, it was the first time I gave myself mental space to evolve, I'd say. Nice. That move was very important, yeah. And I met so many beautiful people, like, so many. Like, 
I don't know. I really be missing like my friends from up there. Like, I just know they all out here killing it and shit. I don't know. It's it's a good feeling like seeing like your squad do good and shit. Like, like shit. Definitely. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, definitely. Because I feel like a lot of people from DC specifically moved to New York during that like 26, 2015 to twenty seventeen period. Yeah, yeah. A lot and there's of like a whole like there. community of people <laughs> mm-hmm. from the city that moved to New York that was still like. And I would validly say, like, that happening influenced a lot of fashion changes in New York on the underground. And I'm going to say that very simply because he was pulling looks (laughs) and they was taking notes. You know what I'm saying? It's like, DC swag is just so inherently itself. Like, there's no real lane to put, you know, how we dress. Because, like, our scammers, you know what I'm saying? (laughs) Like, be doing some interesting (laughs) shit (laughs) with their design. Like, I don't know. Yeah. Yeah, I think it inspired like a whole wave of um, what just sound now, new energy. I also think it kind of affected the music um, in certain pockets as far as like oh for sure yeah like trap shit goes yeah I don't know. I and mean, there's like a whole flow yeah that everyone does now. Mm-hmm. Um, what's a what's a good book you've read recently? You see this book right here? <laughs> My brother. <laughs> the Four Agreements. The Four Agreements. Super fire. I just started that one. I'm like putting a dent in it. Um, I started a couple days ago. I had taken like a break from book reading because mm. I wanted to just walk around being a dumb bitch for a sec. And that's also okay. <laughs> like, you know, like, okay. I don't know. But I'd be, I don't know. I'd be trying to read. I'd be writing a lot. But mm. um, Four Agreements is kind of just like some laws that, you know, you can live by and make life a little easier. Like, they're pretty much, so here's the four. Be impeccable with your word. Don't take anything personally. Don't make assumptions and always do your best. And it gives you just like little food for thought throughout the day on like mindfulness within your interactions. You know what I'm saying? Like Mm. it's, I don't know. It's a fun read. And there's like a fifth agreement. Babby just sent me that. I'm about to lock into that probably like next week. I'm a, I'm a bust through this. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Then I get to some of my bigger ones. Um, Before the Mayflower is a beautiful story of just like our history type shit, but mm. all told from like um black historians, you know, right. like starting like I'm talking like prehistory all the way up until fucking like I think 84 this was published. This is like one of the original paperbacks. Cool. Yo, I, well, this was back when I was living in New York. I was babysitting for this white family, bruh. And they let the dog chew the book up. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and that shit was fucking expensive. It was like 30 bucks. It was like an original joke. Yeah. And like, the way I wanted to strangle, like, every child in the room. <laughs> <laughs> That's wild Kick the dog. Shit. I just, I was pissed the fuck off. I don't know. That's it's so still holding up. But like, the cover, like, it's, I don't know. It's bit in two. It's my bit in two. But um, I tried reading it. And I got to maybe like page 120 for like my eyes tapped out after a while. Like, you ever find yourself reading and I don't know, like you're doing it like before you go to bed or some mm-hmm. shit and you're just not like really retaining like the information you're getting, but yeah. it's just like the calming idea of, I know it's gonna put me to sleep. Yes, exactly. Yeah. I did that like three days ago. Oh, word. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it really be like that. Um, I, I just want to do that with like boring books or like something like yeah. palatable, not like an important jump like that. And I'm just yeah. like missing shit. So I like be less drunk or less smack the day before try to read <laughs> that I read. I'm just like, where the fuck am I? I gotta <laughs> I've restarted that shit like two times, but I'm gonna I'm a get into this after I finish this little four agreements, you know, mm-hmm. like get my eyes used to like high volume reading, you know? I feel like I'm going on a lot of tangents. <laughs> Matter of fact, just let me know if I am. Like, oh, no, no, it's fine. <laughs> I've never, all, like, I've never podcasted. Info. I've never really talked on like a thing like this. This is cool. Yeah. I'm, yeah. I'm having fun, I'm enjoying myself. This is true. <laughs> I got the music going. Mm-hmm. Fucking. Uh, what uh? Went to like your most recent project. And said it couldn't be, and they said it couldn't be done. Yeah. What um, what like, when did you record it, and you know what went into like you wanted to put that out? Okay. Um. So at the beginning of this year, I was working on um. 
The tape I'm about to release in a couple of months. Like Joshy Turner. Um, yeah, yeah. Two notches. Cool. Is that cool? Yeah. Cool. Um, yeah, it was called Mood Indigo, a Black Lecture Tape. I was going to name it after um, my friend Abiana. Um, mm -hmm. She's like a holistic healer in the area, like Yoni, Steamer, it makes teas and stuff. She just had a child named Indigo, and I thought, you know, Mood Indigo is um, like one of my favorite jazz songs. Um, and I was pairing at the time like jazz artists with lecturers, because it's like a lecture tape. And uh, just like making beats with those jazz artists and just seeing who complimented to like, and so I have like um, it's a great idea. A Stokely Carmichael Stanley Clark song. <laughs> I got uh, Miles and Angela Davis. And yo, I was like <laughs> so fucked up when I was making that beat that I didn't realize they had the same last name. And I was just like, why is this called Angela Davis? <laughs> and there's two. I don't know. I'm a slow ass bitch sometimes. <laughs> <laughs> but um yeah i was doing all that and i had like a a lot of like i was telling you like world war ii sound effects <laughs> Just the, like oh the non vets you know <laughs> go marching yeah. for the hills but um so various sonically triggering sounds i was playing a lot with like sirens and turning them into lasers and just like people screaming or getting like um possessed by ghosts and shit just mm -hmm. like, a lot of like, voodoo shit <laughs> um and I don't know, during COVID or when like the protests started kicking off, like I got into like a slight altercation with the police and it kind of like, I don't know, it took me off my knocker for a bit. I was like extremely like, what's the word? When you're like consistently nervous, what's that word called? Anxious. Anxious. It fucked with my anxiety really bad. Okay. So, like, I'd be trying to work on the project and then hear a police siren and I'm just like, Duh, you know, yeah, yeah. <laughs> couldn't be doing that in five seconds. So I was like, you know what? This mm. can go on the shelf. And um, Especially during that time period, too. Shit was just yeah. so tense. And everyone was, like, you could just feel it in everybody. Yeah, you know. Um, so I yeah, put it on the shelf. And I already, I already made and released uh, Neverland with my friend from Duke. His name's mm. Matt Marvin. Um, very talented producer, very talented um, audio engineer. Um, and I think my friend Pocket sent me the beat for Intuition. He didn't even finish it, and I just like wrote to it, sang mm. on it, sent it out to friends. They liked it, and I was like, you know what? I'm gonna do two songs from you know the R and B stuff, and then throw on like two songs from my new shit. So the songs mm. that I made in the before process that I really wanted to keep was uh, Forever Love with Wi-Fi God yeah. and Umoja. Um, that be I like, don't even remember making it. That's mm -hmm. how that's how burnt I be getting, bro. Like, <laughs> I woke up one day, like, hung over, and then I look at my screen, I'm like, hmm, ching -ching 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 -ching. I'm like, what the fuck? <laughs> Yo. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> that's probably like my favorite beat, No Cat. It's just so like, I don't know. Dreamy. I think it was Les Baxter sample. I don't know. He was like a old jazz cat. Um, he's yeah, kind of problematic. Like my <laughs> uh, track off the off the project. Oh, so. thank you. Yeah, yeah. But um, you say he's problematic. Yeah. <laughs> he has like um tapes from like different places in the world, mm -hmm. and so like he's known for his bossa nova type shit. It's like slow, like a ch -ch -ch type jazz. Gotcha. It's very like whimsical sounding. Um. Mm -hmm. But then he'd have a tape like straight from Saigon or some shit like that, and it'd just be all gongs and like him <laughs> playing like the Glockenspiel and shit. And it's like, ah, this is just tasteless, you know. Like the levels of appropriation yeah, that this man yeah. reached were on like yeah. I don't know, like Eminem levels. Like he was like every country's <laughs> Eminem of bossa nova at the time, you know. Like <laughs> I'd be saying anything, wow. Um, <laughs> but nah, yeah. So while I was like I recently got arthritis mm -hmm. uh i just been on my knees too much and <laughs> kind of wore down all the cartilage cool. i just realized now that's a dark joke um <laughs> i should never be worried okay um going past that <laughs> yeah um so in the healing process i had like my legs were like sprained like literally all over like my legs and arms Damn. from the altercation or whatever and so Shit. Yeah, um, I had to do like serious recovery. It took me like a month, and mm -hmm. I was like, not cook. I was like, okay, a raw vegan. 
<laughs> I was like, for the most part, sober. Mm-hmm. Like, I would just do, I mean, shrooms don't count. Shrooms is still sobriety. I feel yeah, like, like she, just not smoking sobriety. and drinking. Yeah, I feel mm-hmm. like I'd be even more sober, you know, but. Mm-hmm. So I was doing that. <laughs> Okay, and weed butter. Okay, I was like, not sober, but I yeah. was. I wasn't drinking at all. Uh, or smoking, for the matter. And I don't know. I was like, workout geek. I was doing yoga every day. I would like go on like bike rides from like, I don't know, like Georgia Ave to Mount mm-hmm. Rainier. Off some like Ew. casual shit. Like, I bike to Glut, bike back. You know what I'm saying? Have a sip of moss, Just get my little <laughs> I was, I was in a good vibe. Soon as the fucking protests happen, all that shit just shuts off. Chain smoking, <laughs> yeah. crying, drinking, yeah. crying into my drinking, drinking into my crying. Um, and I was just eating Postmates because I didn't feel like getting up to cook because I couldn't stand for longer than fucking like yeah. two or three minutes. Like I'd God doing damn. the laundry and I was like, I think three story difference, like fucking Fuck. stressful. Yeah. So I gained 30 pounds. I am <laughs> mm-hmm. um, now in the losing process of that. Like, mm-hmm. um, I think. I lost 10 pounds in probably the last month. Like, oh, shit. it was really just like fatigue from that. And after a while, yeah. all those habits, because you know, 21 days makes a habit. I just became, you know, <laughs> I don't know, like the consistent demon time yeah, yeah. <laughs> energy. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> I, was, I was definitely, it, like, by the time my tape came out, I was chaotic. <laughs> <laughs> like, I remember, like, two days after. And this is, like, when I started, like, leaving the house a little more. Like, she was kind of dying down. Like, mm-hmm. protests she was still happening, but, like, COVID, like, people was giving less of a fuck around that time, like, yeah. beginning of July. Um, yeah, two days after I dropped it, they had, my friends had um, a clothing swap and for this thing called Feed the Need. They're kind of mm-hmm. like a little, like, um, protest organization or whatever, a secret yeah. one. Um, they brought me to the clothing swap or whatever, and I had done, I'd say, five shrooms, like, stem and cap. Uh, I had done probably like a tablespoon of weed butter. Um, I drank half a bottle of rose. <laughs> and I was like, you know what? Because that's like the diet I was on making the album. So I was yeah. like, I could take this outside. No, I couldn't. <laughs> I was like, I literally came through and I felt like fucking fear and loathing. I was just like, <laughs> <laughs> like, not only do people exist that are chill, because I was literally like only with my roommates and they mm. all fucking sucked. <laughs> Okay. Yeah, um, so I got like around like normal ass people, and mm-hmm. so like not to be TMI, or I guess it doesn't matter. I got my period probably like, the day before, mm-hmm. and so like I was feeling the cramps and stuff, also yeah. while not because of the amount of drugs I was on, but also feeling really mood- moody and reclusive. Mm-hmm. Um, that's just my general shadow self, but like <laughs> I was like, hey y'all, I'm having cramps. I'm going to sit in the corner. <laughs> Talk to me if you'd like to. I'm not going to come up and say hi to nobody right now. <laughs> Just had my shades on. I was like eating a whole, I was eating a whole watermelon. <laughs> just sitting down yeah. silently. And like I really felt like a blackface character. was Because it was just like dripping off my Shit. eyes. I, I had my titties out that day. I was like, I just looked like just yeah. awful. <laughs> and at Malcolm X Park, so you just know the bees were just Kill. there. I was like running mm. away from bees on drugs. <laughs> trying to assimilate into a crowd but like literally everybody that cooled with that day like kind of became my main friend group for right wow. now which is really cool yeah like i didn't really sweet. i haven't really been in a space where i've had a lot of like uh queer femme presenting friends because you know like everybody like has like gay friends or whatever but mm-hmm. like you know people that don't necessarily have the same binary of like gender you know it's fun and interesting like i don't know and then i did the fucking live stream like I'd say a month after. Like, that was, like, what, July 20-something? Yeah, it was yeah. at DC9, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I had Tosser, Purple Hurt, um, and my fashion club. Um, I have a band called the Songbird Fashion Club. <laughs> 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 Made up of Songbird employees. Um, yeah, like, Zadar, Ryan, and uh, fucking Pockets. Yeah. Word. Uh, it was pretty fun. We all got to do two shows before COVID. We were, yeah, on some missions. Uh, I'm going to pick <laughs> up that project probably again soon because that was fucking fun. But, um, yeah, I had the idea. I wanted Elise Dorsey. They go by Sedna, my bad. Um, I wanted them to have, like, do, like, backgrounds for me. And then I realized, like, 
what I really have always wanted to do is to have like a full instrument backing and then a full background singing backing. Like the only mm. thing missing from that, if I had like a fucking theremin and someone doing What's like more theremin? like um it's like a, that lasery sound that goes like woo you know what I'm saying? When you put your hand by it, it's just like a high frequency pitch. Oh, okay, I think I know that. Yeah, yeah. Um, <laughs> if I had like a theremin and someone to like do like live like um, SP404 shit, like running samples, that would have been a perfect Damn. show for me. Yeah. Um, but I have like full rhythm Something. section. I've never really had like that sort of setup, and especially all people that I love, like mm. all my friend friends. Like, it was just wholesome. We definitely had some crazy just debaucherous nights <laughs> within the process but you know for the most part all wholesome yeah so, um what's a good movie you've seen recently hmm this might sound weird mm-hmm. but it was a movie that i had a dream of last night there was a like, you ever like see a movie in your dream uh not that I can remember, but that does sound possible, definitely. Yeah, like, I was sitting in front of a screen, and I was watching, like, a weird mix of, like... And I'm only describing this as that, because it's two movies that I have seen that I really like. Um, okay. It was It. <laughs> okay. And... <laughs> Wait, what was the other one? Fuck. You know the movie Ma? With that yeah. chick from the hair... Uh, it's, like, it's, like, scary, CJ right? Walker thing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It was, like, both kind of combined, but also with Everybody Hates Chris kind of sprinkled in. Like, this Tashina Arnold, like, crap! <laughs> 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 but, like, <laughs> the chick from Ma was, like, um, Pennywise. It was just weird. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> but that was probably my favorite movie I've seen in a while. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Um, what, uh, what type of mi- music did you listen to growing up? Like, that I chose to, or what was exposed to me? Uh, do what was exposed to you, and then what you chose. Okay, um, this is actually, I like this question. Um, <laughs> so, like, my dad is, like, a super hip-hop head. Like, he was, like, a breakdancer in the 80s, had the fade right. and everything, the perm, he did it all. Kill. Um... Yeah, um, and my mom, she, like, grew up, like, French 80s music heavy. And, like, when she kind of became a little more bohemian and hipstery, like, Mm -hmm. she got in, like, Ray Charles, Aretha Franklin, Mahalia Jackson, found, like, a southern, you know, bluesy thing, but also super big into jazz. Like, that's where we relate the most, me and my mom. Mm -hmm. Like, um, shit, I remember for, like, my, um, birthday in eighth grade, she took me to a fucking Branford Marcellus concert in like the Kennedy Center oh, yeah shit. I was definitely way too tired and fell asleep in it I felt bad cause I was really fucking with jazz at the yeah. time like that was probably around the time I started like listening to like music that I fuck with cause I do versus like the radio it's probably I'd see like 7th or 8th grade mm-hmm. and like um yeah I like Winton Marcellus you know I'm into Jasper Marcellus currently he's tight um but yeah I don't know my mom she brought me around that um and so it kind of be an interesting trade between like oh also random fact Dad is, um, was a token in high school, and he was living in Kansas, so he has, like, a lot of, like, um, 80s rock, you know, saying, like, yacht rock stuff, or just, Stand. like, yeah, um, like, foreigner and shit, um, <laughs> but yeah, I don't know, so that was kind of what I, exposed, what I was exposed to, and my aunt played a lot of R&B and stuff, she was, like, a former Wellington student, too, or whatever, like, a Broadway actress right now, I think. Oh, shit. Yeah, yeah, um, so I was, like, around, like, R&B and stuff as well. But what I chose was, um, hmm, I was really into Shakira, (laughs) (laughs) Um, Beyonce, Justin Timberlake, Usher, Mm. you know, all the hits, all the good stuff, Missy Elliott, Um, and the stuff that I was really like kind of mesmerized by was like reggae because I would always hear it like far and few in between like Mm. it because my parents really don't listen to much like reggae and stuff like that or like um yeah my granddad he uh he listened to a lot of like a mambo and stuff because he grew up um in the Bronx and like Puerto Rican Dominican communities and stuff like so it's a lot of you know sambas and what have you and salsa and shit Mm. um he was a really good um like salsa dancer Random fact. Um, <laughs> but yeah, I don't know. I had a good variety of shit, and it kind of gave way to like the kind of stuff that I listen to now. Like, 
I heard seedlings of things, you know, around me. I don't know. You know, ever like all the artists that were coming out like around like I guess high school for us were pretty like um as far as genre there wasn't really like a binary for like the sound. It was just like whatever like the new thing was. Um, yeah. And it kinda encapsulated everything, so yeah. So mm-hmm. But you think who was like your favorite artist in ninth grade? <laughs> <laughs> Hmm, fuck. Can I do like a top five? Yeah. Okay, ninth grade. Um, I was really into MF Doom. I loved MF Doom. Uh, Purple Naked Ladies by the Internet came out that year. She don't give a fuck. Oh, <laughs> I was like such a moody fucking kid. Jeez, the hormones and the way they slapped me in the fucking face. Like, I was just, oh. I was like a little chain smoker with bald hair, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> fucking Oxfords and spikes and shit. Like, I was just a fucking snot nose hipster. <laughs> and I can say that with confidence now. Um, so, yeah, I was definitely into like the internet. Um, Tyler Creator got warmed yeah. up too. I was really into Metro Zoo. Cool. Oh my gosh. Ugh, you know. Same. Yeah, uh, funny enough, I got to work with um, Lofty 305. Really? Yeah, a couple oh, times. Shit. Yeah, me and Lofty's doing a lot of work in um, in New York in 2017. Yeah. Um, like Denzel Curry introduced me to him. Word. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And we was were at, it was like, a, you know, a town, right? Yeah. It was a town's birthday, like 2017. Word. So I was like, I called him. I was like, hey, I'm with Denzel Curry. You want to come to a show with us? And he was like, yeah, fuck it. Came through, we party for a Kill. bit, did some shrooms, <laughs> and uh, yeah, we pull up to the joint, and it was a lofty show. And Denzel's like, Yo, I think I'll be tight together. So, yeah, he started staying at my sister's crib with me. Um, like when he was coming up from Florida, and we were just yeah. you know running you know, demo for demo for demo for demo for demo. We only dropped like I'd say three things mm-hmm. together, but yeah, that's fire, cool dude. Yeah, that's fire, mm-hmm. and I was definitely. Into the Metro Zoo. Oh, yeah. Do you Yo, fuck with Space Mink Ghost Rug? Yeah, Mink, Mink Rug, Rug is, uh... used to have the club going up. <laughs> God damn, that was my that ringtone like, for like half an hour. Yeah. So I'm like, there you go, that joke. Oof, that beat. God damn. Crazy. Mm-hmm. Um, you know what the sample is for that? What? You know what the sample is for that? Nah, what is it? It's uh, Mestizo Eyes by... Um... What's the joint? Let me... What's her fucking name? The joint that plays a flute. Um, hold on. But yeah, no. That shit Bobby still Humphrey. cranks to this day. Yeah. Without fail, every time. Let me put it down. Yeah, this show right here, freaking crazy song. Um, I think who else got on that? Um, on this. Fucking currency and Wiz Khalifa. Remember the live album? Year round, we them niggas. You season, yo, that John. <laughs> yeah. I never really got into Wiz Khalifa or currency like that. To be Curren- completely honest. Spit it. Currency is the shit. Honestly, he still got it too. Like he didn't. He didn't get corny or anything. Like a lot of the niggas back then, it's just like. You know, you got your bag now. You kind of comfortable. You make yeah. kids, Bob. That's cool. You know? <laughs> <laughs> but like, he's consistently good. It yeah. has not been, at least from what I know, problematic at all. And cool. we really do love to see it. Good ally, you know. It's like shit. Yeah. Well, um, yeah, I was gonna ask. I always ask this question, mm-hmm. but uh, do you fuck with Space Ghost Perp? Yes. Um, currently, hell no. Yeah. <laughs> but back then, hell yes. <laughs> yeah. Um, what was that jump? Um, the six six point six jump. Yeah, Black Blackland Radio. Radio. Yeah. Oh my God, God that damn! Suck a nigga dick for two thousand eleven. <laughs> like oh, yo, I think. Just so different. Yo, hearing that shit in four eleven, the club was busting. <laughs> the club was really going up. You know, yo, fucking, okay, what's that Gucci Mane song? Um, I ride around with my lieutenant, man, I found it and I spin it. Uh. Trap House 3, literally yeah. the name of the project. Yeah. Wow. Yeah, that and Off the Leash used to go up too. Yeah. Like shit. Mm-hmm. <laughs> um. Yeah. Uh, you did like a, a show via like live stream, right? Other than the DC9 thing, like a couple, like a month ago or something. I feel like I remember seeing 
like promotions for it on your story. Oh yeah, yeah. Um, shit, that was with like uh, Kia and Marty yeah, and shit. Yeah. yeah, yeah, that was cool. Um, How'd that come about? Shabazz from Electric Circus uh, reached mm-hmm. out to me. She's you know good friend. She's Martika's manager. Um, well, you can be calling her Marty. She don't like when I say her government. My bad. <laughs> it's Marty manager and um. Yeah, uh, we were work. We worked closely on some things. They booked me for um, Art Basel a couple years ago. Cool. Yeah. Um, who threw it? I think it was like your dentist manager that threw it or some shit. It was low key fire. Like I put on like Young Baby Tate and shit, and, like <laughs> that whole mix. And I was just like, I don't see how I fit into this at all. But let's <laughs> give it a swing. <laughs> There's been a lot of like random festivals I've been a part of like yeah. that. It's just like. Me? <laughs> like, if this was the glove or some shit, I get it. <laughs> like, yeah. I feel like, yeah, I don't know. Like, I was, I'm usually, I feel more comfortable on a bill with like shitty art house niggas. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? <laughs> like, and I think that just might be my, you know, DC scene comeuppance or whatever. Like, yeah, yeah. I have to have like at least one motherfucker screaming and playing an SP four hundred four, and then you know one jump twerking while singing opera. <laughs> just like I need the variation. Like I can't be the like shit, like shit. Oh, especially like the Shea Butter lineups. It's like bruh, mm-hmm. take a more like hotep hotep for this. Like you know, I'm be like, what's up, niggas? Oh my god, <laughs> just like tweak it. Like I'm a, I don't even be a weird bitch on purpose. I promise. <laughs> yeah, I just, I don't know. Like, I just stop giving a fuck. And I think mm. that's what it really is. Like, at this current moment, I give a fuck about probably, like, seven things. And that's a pretty short list versus things that most people give a fuck about, Definitely. you know? Yeah. Definitely. A thousand percent. It's like a, a handful of cares, you know, versus, like, you know, a whole scoopful. I don't mm. need all that. Um, yeah. yeah. It's too much to try and manage. Worry yeah. about everything. And Especially because you, you really can't control... These four agreements, bro. Thing. You know what I'm saying? I'm telling you, like, you need to lock in. I'm not even trying to sound like, because anybody that reads this sounds like they're in a cult. Like, hey, yo, you read that shit? <laughs> it's like um, freaking liberals with The Secret a couple years ago. Remember when they were all reading The Secret? I'm not hip. It was like the, the twilight of its time for like 30 year old MSNBC fans. <laughs> it truly oh, was. Nah. <laughs> uh, the law of attractions, Joan, like asking, you shall receive. We have to like write it down and make a vision board, do good deeds, and then God's like, you know what? <laughs> it's everything you want like you know i don't know it's like another like a generational cure-all for the general questions of life and why am i not as lit as i want to be yeah yeah and which are dumb things we shouldn't care about you know it's just like we be spending so much time thinking bro like niggas need to not think for a second you know what I'm saying? Yeah. Everything come when you don't think. You know what I'm saying? Animals like don't got shit. shit to think about. And they know where to migrate when a storm's coming. They know all this great shit. We lost all of them factory settings as soon as we started thinking to it. Like, hmm, I wonder who this bitch texted. We like, who's the chromosome? <laughs> you know what I'm saying? <laughs> yeah. Yeah, like, stupid shit. That's why, like, I feel like animals stupid projects shit. evicting us off the planet and the planet probably too because we made shit like taxes. And mm-hmm. I feel like that's probably why global warming's going on and shit. Just like <laughs> the Earth is really over us. Definitely. <laughs> and we're like definitely like the Earth's toxic, messy girlfriend. Like, <laughs> <laughs> like we even cheated. We try and go to Mars. That's cheating, bro. We committed acts of infidelity against the planet, bro. Like <laughs> truthfully, like <laughs> yeah. humans be moving dumb as shit. Like I don't know. Yeah. I don't be thinking as hard, and I'd be like more smack than I used to be. But honestly, like, I kind of feel like more of a comfort in it these days. Like, yes, you know, when you're younger, like, you got to hide everything. Yeah. It's like, oh, I got to drink this beer in secret. I'm like, wine coolers, you just have bad things <laughs> because mm-hmm. cause you're hiding it. It's yeah. just like how people, like, jack off to, like, the scariest porn, not to kink shame. And it's really because they only bust, like, in a person twice or so shit. Or just, like, they don't really have sex like that. Yeah. Because they're ashamed to, like, especially people in, like, strict religions, you know. Oh. Not to offend any strict religions, because yeah, yeah, I yeah. definitely come from one. But, like, yeah, you do a lot of fuck shit in private. And it's just because since you're not really expo- letting yourself get exposed to it, you're kind of, like, um, feeling like a guilty pleasure, which can lead you to do some really fucked up things. You know, like the Catholic Church with the priests and shit, you know? I don't know. What were we talking about? Oh, yeah. Me getting higher. Because, yeah, fuck it. No, yeah, no, it's exactly. honestly like good for your solar plexus too because like a lot of the guilt fear and shame comes out you know when you are high and so it's kind of just like 
if you're by yourself and giving yourself kind of like a chance to like assess you know what's going on and taking things slower you know what i'm saying yeah. like we be giving me time to like take my time like mentally like shit i've been moving so fast off the sober like my brain be like i always feel like i'm running out of time exactly when i'm sober but if you smack like you really like just in every moment longer so even if it's a short period of time it can feel like forever but i don't know i just be feeling more on time for shit when i'm hot honestly like when i'm sober i'd be like oh i'm doing my hair wrong i'm like now 30 minutes late you know I'm, I'm like I'm out of bed. I got locks. It's gonna do what it's gonna do. Yeah, like shit. You know, so I don't know. For me, it, it's a positive experience. Mm -hmm. No, I agree. Mm -hmm. I definitely agree. I feel like I have has pretty similar effects to me too. Mm -hmm. Like nowadays, of course. especially. Mm -hmm. um, do you play any instruments? Yeah, um, I play a couple. Um, Currently, I play like uh, like keys and beat machine a lot, mm. like synthesizer. I'm like some slight like I can definitely like produce a song with like keys or synthesizer, but playing like a live gig, I gotta mm. like train for at least like a month or two to get Kill. some of those like skills back, you know? Yeah, no, like, definitely. I lost my chops on keys. Yeah, but um, I've been playing drum set as well. Um, one of my New Year's resolutions was to get like at least five pockets good and down and like so a couple fills just so I can be able to get through a show because mm -hmm. like like I said I could also like play it on the song but like doing it in real time with in everyone front of else people and stuff it's nerve-wracking yeah. yeah like I've had time to like fuck up with my voice and do that publicly and it's just like you know what I can still be loud and wrong you know what I'm saying the mm -hmm. loud is where the talent is you mm -hmm. know the wrong is me overthinking you know whatever like you know? Um, but yeah with instruments you know it's difficult but i play a lot of auxiliary percussion these days um as well like we're playing like oh this is not my hair <laughs> <laughs> i be playing like um like sound bowl a lot these days or like uh himalayan chimes or like mm -hmm. um i've been making shakers out of like beans and cans and seasonings and stuff like you know i can grab my hands on a lot of glockenspiel being played. What's a glockenspiel? It's like a mini um, metal like xylophone. Like the Johnson. You ever play those in like elementary school? I think I think yeah. so, yeah. And they're like, like different colors. Mm -hmm. sure, yeah. It's like recorder and then glockenspiel. Yeah. Like the two, yeah. Mm -hmm. Recorders really didn't make it into adulthood. I really wonder why like <laughs> they really pressed us for that one. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I, no, you're right. <laughs> There's like, like they could have taught us like a, the actual where, like, flute you know like they just give you a recorder and that's the only time i've ever even like seen it yeah seen it anywhere else. <laughs> Yo, i really think it's like some sort of like um i don't know cia infiltration yeah, like maybe yeah, that's yeah. How... some weird fucking shit that got written into the public school what if like system. it was to save us from an alien attack <laughs> like, like you know what to do just hand <laughs> Play that shit like free jazz, make him run away yeah. or something. <laughs> <laughs> That's funny. Yeah. What's uh what's a piece of history that you wish more people knew about? Damn. <laughs> <laughs> hmm. That's a let me think for a sec. Yeah, because there's mm. hella shit. There's hella shit. There's hella shit. Hmm. Um, Do you think that I wish more people should know about? Yeah. Um. I'd say maybe like Ice Age and prehistory. And I say that because like there were times where humans were around and had to survive on, like, you know, like those like, you know, factory settings, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like living that simplistically. Uh, living with like you know other senses because I feel like they're probably better at communicating with animals than we are now because you're exposed to more of them. Mm -hmm. um, I don't know. It's like we still have that fear as humans, you know, for like um, the fight for our life and stuff. But it's not yeah. like a literal physical fight anymore. So it's just like the passive aggression for our life. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Like, <laughs> like, like, it's like way less. You know, intense. Yeah. You know, and kind of like backhanded. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Well, I don't know. I feel like we made so many dumb rules, and I feel like things could probably be easier if we kind of like to tone back our footprint everywhere. Yeah. Kind of let things repopulate, you know. I don't know. Definitely. And we can get into population control and all that whole jazz and how it's, you know, affecting present day, but like. 
I don't know. Like, I would say that people should move closer together in some parts of the world. Mm -hmm. But also, like, the way nationalism and Zionism and all these things is working, like, it's just really not going to look like that. I know. Like, I know. Animals need more space, and we need to give them that. Like, Chernobyl saved, like, the freaking carbon footprint and, like, that part of the world for, like, you know, some years, honestly. Cool. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, it's, of course, toxic as fuck, but as far as, like... <laughs> And those animals are fine. They get so weird. The radiation did not affect them. That's kind of like a... I saw like a Werner Herzog documentary. Yo, are you hip to that dude? No. Nah. Fucking insane documentarian. Like, he, his stuff is just so like pure. And he kind of talks like a... I can't... Like a really nice Dutch dude. I don't know. Like okay. with a very like sweet, <laughs> soft voice. Yeah, I freaking love that dude. He like uh, made this one movie called Jag Mandir. Which is like this one festival that... Uh, um. I don't know, what's the word for like a king in India? I forgot Maharaja. No, mm -hmm. Maharaja is I think like a um, like a spiritual person. Um, might be the Maharaja. I don't know. Well, the king or whatever for like you know, I think it was like what the eighties in India. He wanted to show his son um, like the culture of India and all the dying customs before like you know like the tribes are gone forever like um. Kind of like undiscovered traditions, a lot of magic, like motherfuckers, like, um, I don't know, cutting into their face and they're not feeling it or whatever, or just like, Man. uh, making like, uh, golf balls and shit disappear out of thin air with like no sleeves on or whatever, okay. so it's just actually like, what the fuck, you're doing, <laughs> dude, how are you doing, I don't know. Um, there was a lot of shamans involved and artists from like all different like walks of life in uh, India, and like, there was a parade involved. It had, like, actual black people in it. Because, you know, there's, like, some black tribes over there. So yeah. They just, like, kind of left, like, um... I don't know, when expansion started happening, you mm -hmm. know, boats is more, you know, available. Especially, like, the Indian Ocean and shit, like, being, like, right there. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Now, there... I was watching this shit on YouTube, like, two days ago. Um, and there was this professor talking about just how... Basically, every country in Asia has, like, an African like group of people that have been living there like since the beginning oh of like, course being, yeah like, people start recording shit, mm -hmm. shit down. like they've always been there yeah yo have you ever seen like uh i don't even know if they be fake but i'm pretty sure they're fake like those um like fiji mermaids or like uh the bones of a fairy or like those giant human bones and shit like all the magical creatures that kind of have like skeletons laying around or whatever like i haven't but that shit's that trippy it, some of it crazy. seem mad fake but some of it seem mad real i don't mm -hmm. know like fiji mermaids they're like this short they kind of look like trout but their faces are all normal um okay. they're like hair and shit Whoa. it's like eyes and teeth like sharp <laughs> teeth. and like i gotta show you a picture of this. <laughs> this is kind of like crazy I remember, I remember I was looking for like uh, pictures of like mermaid proof or like just really drunk one day like hmm, mm -hmm. I wonder what type of images they have like around like this time in history and yeah this shit popped up and I was just like oh this is fucked <laughs> alright I found it like this type of shit whoa <laughs> right whoa <laughs> Like, keep wow. sliding, dude. Like, there's some real crazy shit going on in there. It's like a... Oh, it has hands. Yeah. But it just looks like a fish, which would make sense. Like, if a dude fucked a fish, or, like, some fish <laughs> stayed... No, some human stayed in the water too long, or whatever. Not humans, like, that came from Earth, but, like, the whatever was supposed to be a human yeah, just kind of cooled it or evolved weird. Yeah, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. So it has like a human head and yeah. arms and like <laughs> eyes and teeth and nose, but then just has a tail. Yeah, and they're crazy. like two inches tall. <laughs> Yo, fuck that. Staring at you, <laughs> screaming. Yeah, but I don't know that. Like this Surprise. shit is too oddly specifically real looking. Like what yeah. else has hands like that that small? I don't know. But I like looking for images like that. It's just fun <laughs> to see like either the reaches that people have or like the things that actually make me ask questions like hmm. You know, like, were there fairies? Mm -hmm. <laughs> you know? Like, you ever see, like, those, like, really little, like, human bones? And they're, like, I don't know, like, this tall or whatever? Mm -hmm. Like, and they're supposed to be perceived to be aliens or whatever? Like, it could just be, like, I don't know, pixies and shit. Yeah. Or I it could just not exist. I feel like they probably... I feel like there's so much shit that's gone down yeah. on this planet. 
that we just like don't know right now mm-hmm. or they can't tap into at the moment like the only conspiracy of um uh, like i guess fantasy life existing here that i can actually kind of see is giants specifically in africa mm-hmm. um because like there was kind of a genocide during like uh the eugenesis period like i guess like hundreds or so years ago yeah. maybe a little less and they um they were taking out tribes of people that were all like seven feet taller and taller type shit like the women too and like their bones were bigger like their faces were bigger they were just giant looking humans you know and i don't know if there's anything way bigger than that but i feel like that's just too oddly specific to try and kill off you know yeah yeah <laughs> damn mm-hmm that's crazy. I didn't even know there was a tribe. Yeah, like, there's just, several. Like, a, like throughout like uh, Central yeah. Africa and West Africa, like. And honestly, when I was in Ethiopia, oh when I was like uh, 17, there was this one dude. I think he was from like Omo Valley or like Bennett Tribe or something like that. He was like close to nine feet tall. Oh my god. He was god. like in the eight range or whatever. Like he's <laughs> tall as fuck. fuck. And I asked my grandma, I'm like, hey yo, why the fuck is this nigga so tall, Mo? And she was like, oh yeah, he drinks like. <laughs> cow blood and i was like okay this is offensive i'm not because <laughs> she light skin i don't know like i love her she's playing games sometimes i was like uh, yeah yeah but um yeah so i thought she was bullshit and until like actually like started studying more about like you know southern ethiopians and some tribes where you just be fucking with the blood like a lot of people do that in other parts of the world it's just so weird here mm-hmm. i don't know why like it's pretty common like blood drinking yeah, yeah. Yeah, actually, I feel like a lot of, well, I was going to say human blood, but that is like a conspiracy and probably does happen, Mm -hmm. but also just drinking the blood of other animals, I feel like is even more common. Yeah. And like normal. You know what I've been seeing coming around like uh, a lot recently, like food trends, like bugs, like bugs are making Mm -hmm. a comeback in America, like especially like paleo restaurants, like they had like, I remember I worked at Hugh Kitchen, um... It's like a paleo. They, you know, the Hugh Chocolate brand. It's like paleo chocolate. It's literally whatever. Well, they had like a restaurant, on 14th Street, like Union Square, mm-hmm. and I worked there for like a, a little, like less than a year. And yeah, there was a lot of like cricket bars, like cricket candies and shit. And I was mm. just like, that's kind of bizarre, you know? Like <laughs> I don't know. And especially as a vegan, I was just like. Um, I don't know, it was weird. Like, I'd see people, like, picking it up, and they're like, hey, do you think this is going to make me more buff or whatever? And I'm like, yo, honestly, it'd do something. I don't know. Like, it's, like, a lot of protein, <laughs> but, like... Yeah. I couldn't imagine, like, the legs and stuff. Like, eyeballs. Yeah, it would fuck with me. Yeah. But it apparently slaps. Like, apparently it tastes like chicken or some shit. Hmm. Yeah. Yeah, I'm sure if you cook anything right, it can taste decent. Yeah. I'd eat, like, like a bug candy. It was, like, covered in, like, sweet shit. Yeah, well, like, you'd be tasting the candy and just having the idea of the bug, you know? Yeah. Yeah. Like a chocolate-covered... Spricket. Spricket? Yeah. What's a spricket? It's like a spider cricket. What the fuck? It's Wait. like, it's like a, it's like a circle, but it has legs, and, but it can just jump, like, high as shit, and can fly, kind of. Remember, um, that jump they were frying in... What SpongeBob special was that? Like the future jump when they went all the way when they went all the way to the past and they were frying like that bug sounding thing. I'm not remembering it. Damn. <laughs> you don't remember like when they went like to like prehistory and then they went way to the future and they were in like kind of like robots or whatever. It was like okay. Okay, wait. I- I'm seeing like Patrick as a caveman. You had like, yeah, a, yeah. like a beard. The beard thing. Yeah, yeah. Okay, yeah. yeah. Well, that episode they were frying like a mollusk kind of like circular spider looking thing i don't know why mentally you took me there <laughs> i'm mad the random. <laughs> <laughs> um you you fuck with anime right yeah yeah mm-hmm. what's like your top like three anime characters um, i'd say space dandy that's like if I had like a male form or whatever, I'm pretty sure I would just turn into that motherfucker. He's just big Aries energy. I don't know why. He's like super chill, super spiritual, but also just like I don't know, like a slut. 
and like, <laughs> kind of dumb. But yeah. he also don't be thinking about nothing in a good way. Like how I don't be thinking about nothing. Like he's like, I don't know. A lot of like, uh, there's like a lot of Buddhist um, influence with like the show's plot. And like, they also get a lot into like um, different dimensions, space, time and stuff. And it's the same universe as Samurai Champloo. So it's like, you know, yeah. still, you know, alien bounty hunters, you know, for the Wulongs or whatever. Mm. Uh, so I fucks with Space Dandy. Um, I fucks with Inuyasha. And I know every non-binary person fucks with Inuyasha. So I definitely fall into the stereotype. Um <laughs> That's but like shit. <laughs> it's cause like he masked but he also like I don't know like a dyke that shit fire yeah, <laughs> yeah. and like <laughs> yeah, it's just kind of the perfect balance between like um mm. horror romance and just straight action like mm. the fight this man will get into oh d but I could still like get you know like my will there won't they off it's a good yeah it's a good balance yeah, yeah. and my Definitely. third well, probably, I watched all of Inuyasha like over the summer. Oh, so, yeah, yeah. Like, you yeah. see the movies and shit, too? I haven't seen the movies, no. <laughs> The movies? Okay, some of them are kind of, like, recaps. You know how Dragon Ball has, like, you know, a recap of the season-type movies? Yeah, yeah. Um, yeah, I'd say there were some that were like that, but, like, two that were just complete, like, B-side plot, you know, that they really developed and shit, and the fights would go crazy, like, I don't know. Um, I'm glad Sashaw Maru didn't fuck that kid, also. Yeah. I'm same, really glad. Same, <laughs> you know? Same. You know, because... Right, because there are moments where I was like, this is kind of weird. It's kind of, you know, and weird. I guess it was just like him getting his father shit together. And I was yeah. like, that's cool, but like, I don't know. <laughs> 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 but yeah, my third favorite anime is Shin-chan. Shin-chan is just like, so unbelievably funny. Like... It's really raunchy humor, mm -hmm. and some of the plots are definitely like a little too far. But, um, I don't know. It's like a funny little, like, five year old that just, like, pisses everywhere and always has his ass out. And I don't know. Like, his mom wants to get a breast shop, so she has, like, a jar of coins that she, like, adds to anytime she swears and shit. It's, like, really weird plot lines. Like, okay, I don't that know. sounds pretty off the wall. Yeah, yeah. So, those three are probably my favorite. Yeah. Um. Yeah, I watched Fooly Cooly recently, too. I heard that was really good. I only saw a couple yeah. episodes, yeah. Yeah, because it's only, like, six or eight total. Yeah. Real. It's pretty short. Mm -hmm. and, but, like, every, every like, scene, every shot is, like, something. Yeah. You know? mm -hmm. And, like, I still don't really necessarily know what really happened in it. <laughs> That's why I, I peeled like, off. But I yeah. also understand, like, the art for what it is. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> I low key peeled off with Akira the first time I saw it, and True. then after like a second time, like I was actually sitting down listening to what was happening. I was like, oh no, this is probably one of the greatest movies ever made. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Would would you? I I feel like you've touched on this throughout the whole uh, talk already, but mm -hmm. um, would you consider yourself a spiritual person? You'd say. Um. Yeah, in my own right. Um. I don't necessarily think I have, you know, like a concrete, you know, path to spiritualism. I kind of take and move as I go. I still Same. consider myself like a, a Muslim, mm -hmm. but I also have adopted some practices that are necessarily orthodox, like a lot of like um, West African mysticism. Mm -hmm. I've, you know, studied Buddhism for a bit, studied Hinduism. Um, just kind of getting a feel for like what I resonate with, you know. Um, I never really subscribed to any of those religions like personally, mm -hmm. but um, I've definitely like learned under like master teachers in um, each of those, and also like cometicism mm -hmm. I was into for. Um, well, I mean I still practice in some spaces um, mm -hmm. like ancient Egyptian things, but these days I'm kind of consider myself like. I wish there was like. A non-binary turn for like priestess you know what I'm saying but I consider myself something similar to that in training for like you know um, like Orisha culture and like you know yeah like West African things yeah mm -hmm. yeah I've definitely been wanting to get more into um, like the West African mm -hmm. culture and or not even culture just like spirit spirituality for real mm -hmm. I feel like they're just like really tapped in. Yeah, man. Like, it's interesting because like, 
although my family started practicing Islam because it was, you know, the religion that, you know, a lot of people were in West Africa at the time, you know, yeah. when connected to your roots and all. But, like, I feel like a lot of people kind of neglect the fact that, like, we were also practicing, you know, I guess the same, like, netherworld, like, type spiritual quest. Yeah, you know, that like, a lot African of were, Islam is different from, like, I would say, like, um, Islam itself because it's like a more or like Islam in other places yeah sure. it varies country to country yeah, and then there's sure. kind of like the consensus kind of Islam that American Muslims have mm-hmm. of just like you know I don't know some people do you know fuck with like the Saudi Arabian tradition and to, it's funny because like when Ramadan happens mm-hmm. it's always like a day before um <coughs> on like calendars to what Americans should like typically be, you know, fasting for. Like and it's because they go by like the Saudi um time clock versus like, you know, the other ones that like they break their fast a day early as well for um Eid. It's just interesting. Um but yeah, uh in like West Africa and stuff and like Central and all the places that, you know, um Islam took place, you know, there was already religions that we were all ingrained into, and those aren't necessarily, like, I mean, if to a lot of, I guess, um, like, the cardinal religions, like Judaism, Christianity, Islam, like, some of the things we were practicing were, like, you know, like, um, it's hard to describe, a little too unorthodox, and so now it's seen as, like, you know, modern, like, paganism, or witchcraft, or, you know, like, idol worship, and all that stuff, and mm-hmm. I just really don't think that's the case, like, if we were here and we were thriving here, well, why wouldn't we adopt a little bit of that, you know? Yeah, yeah. Sure. So, um, Do you fuck with stand up comedy? Yeah, yeah. Who are um, some of your like, favorite comedians? Hmm. I fuck with Reggie Watts, and I don't know that makes yeah. me a Bernie bro, but like, <laughs> I really fuck with, he's just so funny, he's so talented, like, really is. that's he's a motherfucker I really want to work with, like, Reggie Watts yeah. would be a life goal, like, have you heard of, um, Linkwood? He has, like, a side freaking, um, like, electronic project, and Word. he's, like, singing on it, it's kind of like, um, how would I describe it, it's like, disco-y? Okay. But also like super electronic, like whatever yeah. that Daft Punk niche is. Gotcha, I'd say they're like gotcha, aligned yeah. around that, like you know, like the Reggie type vocals. Mm-hmm. Um, Sounds fire. Yeah. What was the question? Oh yeah, sound comedians. Um, I like Chappelle. You know, I don't necessarily align with all of you know his views at times, but yeah. I still you know I know what legend when I see one. Yeah. Yeah. You know, uh, I fucks with. Donald Rawlings, he's from here, he's cool <laughs> shit, you know, like, another person in the he's Dave Chappelle here, canon. Yeah. yeah, I didn't even know he was from here, which is dumb, because he definitely has, like, a here. D.C.-ass accent. Yeah. When you listen to him, like, <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> I, I, fucks, I fucks with Donald Rawlings, heavy. Um, he's funny as shit. Yeah. And I feel like he's um, not really, like, that recognized for, like, how, like, Fucking so things. fucking funny. It, even his like character acting. Yeah, like, exactly. There will never be another Ashy Larry. Nah. Will, there's the only one, you know, like. And like all the other characters he played too, they were just always funny as shit. Funny as shit. And you would just say like the perfect amount of like shit mm-hmm. and like know when to not say anything and know like when to say like the time is just always. Yeah. Crazy. Mm-hmm. Um, I don't know. I have. I, just, I I do listen to a lot of comedy. Mm. R.I.P. Louis C.K.'s career. That was, you know, like, <laughs> he didn't yeah. have to do it, but he did it, and that sucks. Because I really, like, he was my favorite comedian, and so yeah. I heard about this, and I was like, yeah, I don't want to fuck that right. guy. I don't want to, you know, align with that. So, mm. yeah, that was that was a, a sad day. Um, yeah. I fuck with Dave Attell. Dave Attell? Who's yeah. that? He, um... He's like, damn, that's hard to even describe. Well, uh, you know Jeff Ross, right? Jeff Ross. He does like the roasts and shit. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, him and Jeff Ross, like, most recently did like a thing together. Mm-hmm. But he's kind of like, part of like, like Louis, like uh, Joey Diaz, like. Bill Burr, like, kind of part of that, but mm-hmm. he's just, like, 
He's, I mean, he's wild as fuck, and he says, like, the wildest shit, but he's so, yeah. he's, you can tell he really is a, a joke writer. Where, where? So he just yeah. goes up and just has, like, endless jokes, like, to just say. That's fine. And he, um, just really big on, like, crowd working. Mm-hmm. So he'll just, like, talk shit to the crowd the whole time and just pull out one of his, like, one-liners. Mm-hmm. And it's just, it's just... I don't know, you could tell he's really in it for, like, the stand-up and, like, the joke writing. Because he could have gone, like, a whole another route and be, like, really, like, rich and famous, successful, blah, blah, blah. And he was like, nah, like, I want to do the grimy bars at one in the morning with, like, everyone's drunk as shit and yelling yeah. at me. Like, that's what I, what I live for. Whatever. That's where, like, the artistry comes into play, and yeah. I think that's beautiful. I'm, like, big loafing on uh, John Mulaney. I definitely left that out of there. John Mulaney's fucking hilarious. He's funny as fuck. Yeah. And uh, Bernie Mac as well. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Definitely. Mm -hmm. (laughs) Yeah, because I feel like a lot of people, especially... Oh, shit. Paul Mooney. Oh, Dick Gregory. Oh, I can get into Paul Mooney and Dick Gregory for like a while. Oh, my God. Paul Mooney is (sighs) no one... I will watch his special. I've seen his specials like... 10, 12 times, and I still like, I still laugh, laugh every, every time. Every oh my time. gosh, shit. yo, eating that shit with like a plate of some soul food, <laughs> feeling spiritual. Like, that's yeah. if we want to get the spirituality, it's pairing some food with some palm mooney. You know what I'm saying? Like, wow, like the negroid laughs that ensue. <laughs> <laughs> Like, oh my god. Uh, I actually oh, wanted to shit. get, like, um above my knees in line work. I wanted to get on my left side, uh, Paul Mooney, about, like, this size. <laughs> um, for anyone hearing, I'm doing, I guess, two middle finger to thumbs. Yeah. Um, like, right here, facing me. And then I wanted to get, like, a young Dave Chappelle, like, on this side. Mm. Uh, and we had knee slappers. I'm laughing. Knee slappers. Yeah, it's a good <laughs> vibration. You know what I'm saying? Like, yeah. 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 But, um... I listen to a lot of Dick Gregory lectures. Fun fact about me. Like, mm. he locked in. Like, he, like, I think went through a fast for, like, a year of his life didn't eat food. Yeah. Oh, shit. Uh-huh. And it was just water and, I think, even juices. Yeah. And, like, before he was, like, a chain smoker, drink, and, you know, smoked here and there or whatever and after he went on that cleanse he was like sober forever and super into plant life you know vegetable food i think he was like from close to 300 pounds went down to like 140 or some shit God. yeah um civil rights activist i can i love dick gregory you know i have seen like interviews where he's like a part of like the group of people talking and shit like yeah that. but i haven't dived like dove into them yet mm-hmm. and i feel like i and i know like i definitely should i just yeah. haven't gotten to it yet but his comedy tapes are I think great I'm gonna check it out mm-hmm. definitely soon and they're honestly really like um informative if you're looking for like the history of that time i'd say mm-hmm. like you know like 1968 special and shit like when you did like playboy club and stuff like because it's all about the current events like what's happening like you know then and now and shit yeah. I think the funniest shit this motherfucker ever said he said um, like in his eyes a real white man is like the 1% and the motherfuckers that control the world like Rothschilds and like Sears and Roebuck and all that and like he said that they stopped him sat him down at the table and asked him the secrets to the world that he knows and he was like you know what I've never seen a baby pigeon and I was just like wait I'm like what he was like pigeons are like immediately grown up so I see one pregnant but I've never seen the baby of a pigeon <laughs> he's in <there> like <laughs> <laughs> I don't know why, but that really took me out because he's like silly humor like that, but yeah, saying such serious shit. like yeah. you know black revolutionary things like I don't know he <laughs> is funny as shit. Or like um, where do albino people go after middle school? <laughs> like where are the adult albino people? Like do you have many in your life <laughs> yeah. right now? You know, like, <laughs> That's crazy. Right, I have no albino friends. Yeah, not yeah. Me either. <laughs> you know, like, damn. Yeah, Dick Gregory's great. Oh, shit. Word. Well, I think, um, those are all the, the questions I I have for real. Oh, yeah. Um, what, what do you have? Do you have anything planned for the future? Like, what should we look out for? Yeah. Like, um, coming next up. So, sorry. Um, I have 
Babby's album that I'm dropping through Ultranam um, next month, November 15th. Mm-hmm. Um, Is that your label? Yeah. I like just you know for like my publishing and all of, like you know I release endeavors I just like keeping my stuff in house yeah I got a good engineer and I know mm. how to talk business so it just it works out good Stamp. and like with releases how does that work because you have shit on like um, Apple Music and mm-hmm. Spotify and how, how does I go through like a private distribution Word. yeah I pay like probably $40 a year and um, yeah it, it covers like the expense of having the label name in its existence or whatever so it's kind of like domain which is cool um Same. and yeah so i have like think an unlimited membership for like signing on artists and releasing it through you know me instead of just having it with the account for your that one artist yeah. um Word. yeah that's fine because you can't write a label name for like i think the cheaper deal or whatever but um mm-hmm. yeah so i'm dropping my album probably in like late December, early January, uh, Mood Indigo, Black Lecture Tape. Um, I've recently started doing um, like the vocal recordings over the past like couple weeks. Mm-hmm. And because I was like producing it for like half the year and now I'm finally getting all the vocals tracked and yeah, it's going to be an interesting sure. process. Yeah, we'll expand on the idea. And um, the homegirl, Rakaya, uh, she just moved to the area. Um, phenomenal singer um i'm releasing her project i believe in like february or march Mm -hmm. and so um yeah look out for those things um i'm also doing only vibes saturday um i suppose yeah i'm doing a set with babby and rakaya seeing my backgrounds um i I don't know i've been thinking of making like a tea brand like dropping like a line of tea with like a next song or whatever something like that opening an apothecary yeah go with herbs and go with herb work so it's yeah. a great idea. Yeah. Might as well. Mm-hmm. But yeah, that's what to look out for. All right, bet. Mm-hmm. Well, thank you again for talking. I feel like this was pretty fucking, pretty fucking great. Oh, thanks. Informative. Mm-hmm. Um, so yeah, Sleepwalker Radio. Gonna sign off. Again, thanks for this. Like, this is super cool. Like. Like I said, I've never really been like recorded in this capacity, so I'm grateful. Okay. All right. Peace. Peace. <laughs> <laughs>